Hello and welcome to This American Land. I'm Bruce Burkhart. And I'm Caroline Ravel. We've got a great show ahead about protecting our natural resources from forests to fish and other wildlife. Successful conservation usually involves local teamwork. In southwestern Montana, an effort to improve forest health, reduce fire risk, and preserve backcountry traditions involves a lot of give and take. Gary Stryker has our story. I started working for the Whitetail Ranch in 1957. I've been working in, in the Bob Marshall ever since, every year. Hopefully this will make 55 years if I can get in there today. So, and it looks like we're gonna make her. If you're looking for an adventure in Montana, the Bob Marshall Wilderness tops the list. And nobody knows the Bob better than Smoke Elser. My grandkids worked out a, to see how many nights I've slept in a sleep bag in the backcountry, and it ended up being over 22 years. Smoke has been horsepacking clients into the Bob Marshall since before it was officially declared wilderness in 1964. One of my mentors, Tom Edwards, he always said it was a hush of the land. It's a place where you have to rely on yourself, and nature has all the upper hand, and uh, yet you have to fit into it. A journey into wilderness must be taken at nature's pace, and there's no better way to travel than with the help of a four-footed friend. There hasn't been any new wilderness designated in Montana for nearly 30 years, but the contentious battle over land use issues started cooling down recently when loggers and wilderness advocates began to talk with each other. The realization that we aren't making any more wilderness resource, and we aren't making any more timberland, and we aren't making any more habitat for wildlife, all of a sudden people said, gee, we're running out of this stuff. Maybe we better start taking care of it, and we gotta figure out a way to take care of it. The result is a bill working its way through Washington that would add 700,000 acres of new wilderness in Montana, designate areas for off-road vehicle use, and guarantee 100,000 acres of timber for local lumber mills. And what we're trying to do right now is set aside a little of this wilderness so that future generations will have the opportunity to make good, solid land management decisions for the future generations. The future generation includes Zach Porter, a wilderness advocate and program director with the Montana Wilderness Association. People were at loggerheads over these issues and, and uh, nothing was getting done. Uh, nothing was getting done for wilderness. Uh, we weren't doing timber projects where they, they could have and should have been done. And fortunately, people realized that we have more in common than, than not and decided to come to the table together. One of the businesses at the table was Pyramid Mountain Lumber in the small town of Seeley Lake on the edge of the Bob Marshall Wilderness and Lolo National Forest. The family-owned mill produces high-end lumber products but doesn't own its own land. It depends on access to the timber in the National Forest to keep its 250 employees working. Well, I've long told the timber industry that we can't get what we want by ourselves. There has to be something in it for everybody. And there's an interest in, in wilderness as well as an interest in forest management. And where there are critical streams that need work. And I think the ultimate realization is we can have all of it together that we can't have separate. That bill in Congress, the Forest Jobs and Recreation Act, would give local mills access to 100,000 acres over the next 10 to 15 years. Most of the logging would be forest management projects that would restore watersheds and take out trees killed by the recent pine beetle outbreak. Business owners in the town of Seely Lake need the lumber mill and summer visitors to survive. Everything that you would ever need to survive is in my shop. Adrienne Marks owns one of the most popular businesses in town. She supports more access to timber for the loggers and trails for snowmobiles, 
but also supports the need to create more wilderness. Everything is contingent on the natural resources in all of its different places, in, in recreation, in timber, in, in wilderness areas, in outfitting, all of it. So we need all of those segments healthy. And to me, I've seen nothing finer than this act. Just north of Sealy, Zach Porter looks out across Rainy Lake at a mountainside that would be added to the Bob Marshall Wilderness. Folks in my generation are ready to get past the, the bickering back and forth. Uh, we're ready to come to the table and find common ground on issues like this. This is a landscape that would be protected and enhanced through the Forest Jobs and Recreation Act. We have the chance to bring the apron of the wilderness down to these lower elevations where wildlife can, can thrive in ways that they can't necessarily up, at, up in the rock and ice that we've protected before. Porter has trekked hundreds of miles, exploring many of the 25 new national forest areas that would be designated wilderness. What we've got behind us here is the 10,000-foot crest of the East Pioneers uh, proposed wilderness. The Pioneers are the main watershed for the Big Hole River, one of Montana's famous Blue Ribbon trout streams. With warmer winters, pine beetles have survived and killed most of the lodgepole and whitebark pine trees that once protected the winter snowpack. Adding more wilderness to the area might help protect the health of the river by keeping areas roadless. Yeah, it's not full. Charlie O'Leary, a former county commissioner, has been hiking the pioneers since he was a kid. In the wildlife up there, we've seen sheep, uh, goats, uh, moose, elk, uh, mule deer, and lots of bears. It's a, a tradition in our family, going to the wilderness. It uh, gives you that place for peace and quiet, to reflect, to have fun, to fish, to hike, to ride horses, to view wildlife, and to just be in, in a place that has been that way for thousands of years. One of those places is Grayling Lake, where the ice is melting as the wildflowers bloom it would be designated wilderness under the act. Back on the edge of the Bob Marshall, Smoke Elser and his crew are finishing packing their mules and saddling their horses. Connie Long is considered the most important person on the crew. She's the cook, which isn't an easy job in grizzly bear country. We do everything we possibly can. We don't burn food in the campfire. Um, we do special things like I string my dishwater uh, to get out all the food particles uh, through cheesecloth and then it, it, we incinerate it in a, in a tin can. Outfitting brings a lot of um, money to the area because people come and they're, because we start so early in the morning, they have to have a place to stay. So the motels and hotels in the area really benefit and restaurants because they need to eat breakfast and dinner and, you know, souvenir shops because everybody wants to take uh, something home with them. When you get as old as I am, by golly, you get some respect here. With 23 miles to ride to their wilderness camp, Smoke is going to make his mark. 55 years riding into the Bob. Maybe there's something in here that's more valuable, more valuable than trees and, and uh, gold and silver and more valuable than photographs and all that other kind of thing. Maybe it's clean air, maybe it's clean water. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a sanity of man. <laughs>